A cleanup at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has hit more snags. The plant operator is trying to contain newly discovered water leaks. Tokyo Electric Power Company says it's found two new leaks from systems at the plant. About 30 liters of water have escaped. Company's officials say none of the leaked water has spilled into the sea. The company had already found leaks in 14 other parts of the plant. Nearly eight tons of water escaped. They say all the leaks were probably caused by water freezing and expanding in cold water. Workers will try to prevent more leaks by patrolling the plant on cold mornings and wrapping insulation around pipes and equipment. Japanese scientists have unveiled a new robot for work at the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The machines will map the plant and measure radiation levels. The robot was designed by researchers at Shiba Institute of Technology and other organizations. An older version became tangled in power lines inside the plant. It was retired three months ago. The new model is about the same size but is designed to avoid getting caught in the cables. The robot has six rolling bells that allow it, allows it to move freely over debris and navigate staircases. It can also communicate wirelessly with its handler. Two of the machines will be sent into the plant. One will measure radiation levels, the other will have a scanner to map the plant's interior. We have developed these robots to avoid a repeat of the previous problems. The robot's role is to reduce workers' exposure to radiation. The two robots will be deployed at the Fukushima power plant by mid-March. Japan's labor ministry is trying to protect people who face abuse on the job. A panel of experts has defined what constitutes workplace harassment and is telling companies to come up with ways to deal with the problem. Condemnation from my boss was nothing out of the ordinary in my office. I was forced to put on a performance at drink parties after work. Panel members explained their findings Monday. They defined workplace harassment as an any action in which a superior causes mental or physical suffering to his or her employees. They categorized six forms of abuse. Physical abuse, mental abuse, neglect or isolation, demand for an infeasible amount of work, providing no work or giving assignments that differ from an employee's experience or ability, Excessive prying into private affairs is also considered a form of harassment. The Labor Ministry says the number of workplace harassment complaints is on the rise. They reached nearly 40,000 in 2011. That's a nearly six-fold increase since 2002. Workplace harassment deprives workers of their enthusiasm to work and could lower productivity as well. So it's crucial for companies to make their own rules. Members of the Labor Ministry panel say working conditions vary from one company to another. They're calling on individual firms to spell out what constitutes harassment. Then the companies will be expected to come up with solutions, such as providing consultation services for employees. A new report predicts that Japan's population will shrink dramatically. The National Institute of Population and Social Security Research examined expected demographic trends through the year 2060. The researchers predicted the number of Japanese will shrink by about 40 million over the next half century. 
The population stood at 128 million as of 2010. The report says it will fall below 100 million by mid-century. By 2060, it's expected to drop to 86 million. The average life expectancy for men was more than 79 years in 2010. The report says that figure is likely to rise to more than, 80, uh, more than 84 years. The average expectancy for women was more than 86 years in 2010. The average woman is expected to live longer than 90 years. The proportion of the population aged 65 or older was about 23% in 2010. The estimates suggest that proportion will reach 33% in 2035 and almost 40% in 2060. The report says the average number of babies born per women will increase slightly to 1.35 in 2060. Analysts for the Institute said more women who have held off having children are expected to give birth in their late 30s. This demographic shift is expected to have an impact on all facets of Japanese society. Keio University professor Noriko Tsuya is urging the government to swiftly review social security measures, including pension, employment, and child-rearing support. None of Japan's social systems, including the pension system, is designed to deal with such a rapid decrease of the population or the aging of society. The government needs to revise the current systems, taking the expected demographic changes into account. It faces challenges of making political decisions and drawing up policies to address these issues. The population in the Tohoku region that was hit hard by the March 11th disaster has experienced a net decline of more than 40,000 people. The Internal Affairs Ministry announced the results on Monday. The figures are based on a demographic survey last year in the northeastern prefectures of Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima. The statistics show that nearly 130,000 people moved out of the areas, while about 88,000 moved in. It's the first time since 1970 that the population in the regions has decreased by more than 40,000. Fukushima Prefecture lost more than 30,000 people, the worst among the three prefectures. The ministry says the data indicates that many people left Fukushima Prefecture after the earthquake and tsunami and the accident at the nuclear power plant. Trainee caregivers from Indonesia and the Philippines are looking after elderly people in Japan under economic partnership agreements. Some of them have taken the national qualification examination for the first time. The exam was held throughout the country. More than 780 trainee caregivers have arrived during the past four years under Japan's economic partnership agreements with the two nations. 95 trainees sat the test on Sunday after completing the three-year training requirement at nursing care facilities in Japan. Vitri Huayu Ningusi is one of the Indonesian trainees. She works at a nursing facility in Tokushima Prefecture. When she arrived in Japan, she had a hard time learning Japanese, but now she even speaks some local dialects. I hope they will be full of life. Foreigners who come to Japan to work as caregivers must return home if they fail to pass the national exam within four years. Fitri took the exam for the first time after completing the three-year training. If she fails, she will be allowed to stay another year in Japan but only if she achieves a certain grade. The exam is difficult. Only 50% of the Japanese caregivers who take it are successful. Fitri has studied for more than six hours a day, struggling with difficult Chinese characters and technical medical terms. If I don't pass, my three years of study will have been wasted. Nursing care facilities are short of staff. In Tokushima Prefecture, there are more than three jobs for each applicant in this field. This facility has high expectations for Fitri, who has already become indispensable. Nursing care services in Japan really need foreign workers nowadays. It will be a pity if good caregivers have to return to their countries after training. Fitri took the national exam. 
I'm nervous, but I'll do my best. The caregivers have a hard time reading and writing Japanese. The welfare ministry has tried to help them by adding hiragana, or English equivalents for technical terms written in Chinese characters. The exam is over. I did my best. Now I just have to wait. I've done what I can. The results of the national exam will be announced on March 28th after a test of skills. Notice how weird it starts to get when you just stop breathing? <laughs> 